Mr. Speaker, I want to take leave at this point to express my condolences to the Gasper family on the passing of their uncle, Bafelmi Gasper, who passed away in Canada. He was my former principal when I was a student at the Babunu Primary School. He was a tough disciplinarian, and I believe all those who went through under his stewardship did very well in life. I want to express condolences to the Davids family from Magwetut in the constituency of Grosile for the passing of the mom. I want to send greetings to the residents of Babono in all the communities starting from Debara, Bogis, Lage, Monsito, Plato, Pebush, Gara, Lakwa, Tishime, Foaso, Shasen, Talvan, Kakojiwa, Hill 20, Kabish, Balata, Timon, and Union Terrace. I want to thank them for their support so far and the confidence that they have placed in me to represent them, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I want to congratulate in advance all workers of St. Lucia as we prepare to observe Labor Day. And I expect all my colleagues, we are workers even beyond the call of duty, and we need to celebrate that day that's set aside for us. And they will celebrate the day under the theme Embracing Fundamental Principles and Rights at Work for Greater Productivity. On Sunday, Mr. Speaker, on a side, it will be the feast of the Babono Good Shepherd Church. And that church was built in 1947, where Father Albert will be officially installed as our parish priest for Babono at 4 p.m by the Archbishop, His Grace, Mas Day. Mr. Speaker, as I turn quickly to the budget presented by the Honorable Prime Minister and Parliamentary Rep for Castries East, I want to use an analogy I um, coined a few years ago. At an annual general meeting in Castries South, the Castries South constituency of the St. Lucia Labour Party, where at the time Honorable Robert Lewis was the parliamentary representative, I described St. Lucia at the time as a vehicle which had a reckless driver and it was overturned and was left with all four wheels up in a pool of mud. This was the description that St. Lucia carried at the time. And before July 2021, on the 26th of July, I also described St. Lucia in that same state. But at the time I said, with a vehicle in that state, there came a mechanic, an experienced driver, who went to pull this vehicle out of the mud, put it back on its wheels, repaired it, and then set it as ready to roll again. Well, Mr. Speaker, that is what is happening again when we use The, the letters P J P Pull Joseph Pull <laughs> and what this mechanic and driver has done he has basically pulled St. Lucia out of that mud and put it back on the road for us to roll that is how I describe this budget Mr. Speaker, I am so focused 
on the goal of helping to improve the quality of life for St. Lucians, that I spend very little time and energy focusing on those who destroyed the country and left it in un unnecessary debt, which this government has to honor. Mr. Speaker, pour l'état gouvernement ça là en marché saint lucy 28 ju juillet 2021 excellent gouvernement ça là entre à bas conduite premier ministre qui sorti qu'à suisse east avec moi qu'à ouais avec 18 mois ils ont tiré saint lucy en canal là la boîte is a nettoyé, is a repay, et puis il mette au chimère pour nous ça rouler, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on the 26th of July, after the victory of the St. Lucia Labour Party, the Prime Minister assigned me the responsibility for the Ministry of the Public Service, Home Affairs, Labour and Gender Affairs. We haven't had a conversation about that up to today after 18 months. We just have to continue to do what we have to do. But Mr. Speaker, the Department of the Public Service is what will help this budget become a reality. And everything I say here, Mr. Speaker, I will link it to the theme of the budget, health and security, the pillars for sustainability. And without a strong public service, no matter what plans, what ideas, how much money is allocated, we will not see the results. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, we are getting ready to reform and modernize the public service in order to get the wheel of government to turn at a faster rate. In preparing for public sector reform and modernization, this will be a huge undertaking. But we must and have to restructure the public service. Failure to do this means the government's operations will be doom and gloom. Mr. Speaker, when I looked at the budget, I went from page to page and I'm saying, where is the public service? Where is my department? And Mr. Speaker, it dawned on me that the public service and my departments are all over the budget because they have to make this budget a reality. Mr. Speaker, as stated in the budget under the theme, health and security as pillars for sustainability, we must uphold the principles articulated, which speaks to inclusiveness, accountability, equity, meritocracy, and rule of law. And Mr. Speaker, we have a challenge to keep law and order in this country, because there had been a breakdown of law and order prior to this government coming in. And that is why today, Mr. Speaker, we have all the challenges dealing with violent behavior in this country. We need a public service which will adhere to the principles. One, the first step is to design and enact new legislation to start the process to effect changes and the culture of the public service to get greater productivity. And that is how we will achieve health and security and stability and sustainability in this country. Mr. Speaker, we have had several sessions to look at the Public Service Management Bill and Regulation. And Mr. Speaker, you need to note that the last time we had the staff orders for the Public Service in St. Lucia, that was in August on August 25th, 1983, 
And this tells us how old our laws are. And therefore, we need to move in time. Si nous pas changer ces vieilles lois là, moun ka kontinye ka ba bien, li yo pa ka jwenn bon service le gouvernement ka travay. We have to change these laws. The staff orders, people working for government, we have to review these laws so that they can give the public efficient, effective and quality service on a daily basis. C'est pour ça au gouvernement ka am pour tax Premier ministre qui a collecté taxes, il a prêté l'argent et il a payé les gens qui travaillent avec le gouvernement pour bailler ces gens bon service. The need for a public service management bill was recognized about two decades ago. We have that bill there, almost two decades. And that was done by a legal consultant. Now we are reviewing the legislation so that we can make this the new law under which this government will govern. Mr. Speaker, we had multi-stakeholders consultation to look at the regulation. The Public Service Management Bill will look at new areas of promoting efficiency and effectiveness. The Public Service Bill must look at public service principles, values, objectives, and policies. That was not in the staff orders, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, we have to look at the general conduct of public officers, Mr. Speaker. That is the only way, Mr. Speaker, we can have a country that is healthy and safe when we have officers who are working and giving the best. Mr. Speaker, the bill that we want will focus on safety and health in the public service. And you heard, Mr. Speaker, how my colleagues in Parliament talk about the issue of mold. And this is costing the government millions of dollars. Employees are take, um, staying away from work. They cannot work in the environment. And the taxpayer's money has to be collected to correct that on a regular basis. It's, it's like a, every day we have a wildcat action where some, some institution, somewhere is closed. Because my department deals with facilities. And before we clean up, we deal with mold. Sooner rather than later, Mr. Speaker, we have to go to another one. So, Mr. Speaker... As we look at the way forward in this budget, we have to ensure, as stated earlier by the Minister for Infrastructure, that the buildings, the conditions under which we work has to be safe and secure. Mr. Speaker, in the, collective, um, in the um, budget, the Prime Minister spoke about collective bargaining and collective agreement. And the bill will also adjust that, Mr. Speaker. We are looking at code of ethics and regulations for public officers. If we do not have discipline, we do not have ethics in the public service, we will not realize the goals of the budget. It will be like spinning top in mud. The money that we collect, the money that we spend, the programs that we want to implement, we will not see the results. Mr. Speaker, we are moving in the technological age and the Ministry of the Public Service is responsible for the public sector modernization development strategy, which is aligned to the 2023-24 budget. And this is a huge project in the public service. The scope of the project, which costs approximately 12.6 million US dollars, and we want persons to embrace that, or else that money will go to waste. Mr. Speaker, Charles Awive, Kote Nupaka Fabagai Kotibutik, 
This budget is there to advance St. Lucia, bring St. Lucia to the next level. And based on the programs identified under the different sectors and the plans of the Honorable Prime Minister, we need the modernization, the technology to help us achieve that. Mr. Speaker, the public service is the clearinghouse of all government's human resource management and training or development. It has the responsibility to build organizational structures among all government agencies as well as maintenance of all government facilities. In the coming months, we will explore the possibility of bringing all units of the public service under one roof for greater cohesion, coordination, and to develop a new culture of operation for better customer service. Mr. Speaker, our digital transformation strategy is already bringing results. Government is already saving millions of dollars when we go in the technological world. And the digital transformation strategy focuses on business, education, health, tourism, agriculture, and government. It will involve citizens and society, businesses, and the public service. And when you look at this budget, Mr. Speaker, we are focusing on improving business community. We want to improve the quality of education. We speak to the laptop and all the things that government is putting in education. And this budget focuses on health and quality of health. We talk of tourism, which is the mecca generating revenue for this country. We need agriculture for food security and safety. And we need good governance. Mr. Speaker, we have to focus on the policy pillars and accelerators that will focus on digital transformation, governance, governance and funding, digital community skills and training, integrated digital architecture and infrastructure, and digital security and trust. The introduction of online service to do business with government will result in huge savings to government. And the main objective is to deliver quality service to the public and a more in a more efficient and effective manner. So Mr. Speaker, when I look at this budget, we move quickly to the Department of Gender. And the Department of Gender speaks to equality between men and women in all aspects of the society. This is the department, Mr. Speaker, you would not have seen reflected heavy in the budget because this department is almost self-sufficient in terms of the projects and programs. And I have always said that when we put gender on the agenda, others put us on their agenda. Because a lot of support is out there to ensure that there is gender equality between men and women. And for this reason, we have a number of projects going on in the gender department. But what this government has done is to provide the infrastructure where the Prime Minister has given the gender department the request in terms of physical space and additional staff for them to be able to deliver. Mr. Speaker, we have the National Gender Equality Policy, which we are going to implement in this financial year. Avec les nous garder situation madame et monsieur nous ca parler côté madame et monsieur ni pour égal yon pas ni pour devant yon pas ni pour derrière là madame et monsieur maé yo ca chebé yon bolot yon pas ca devant l'autre là pas ca derrière so yo ni pour égalité nous ni pour ni égalité so that is what we talk about equality in gender and mr speaker 
when we talk about security we talk about violence and some of the ill or anti-social behavior in our country this is what the prime minister spoke at length on this issue in the budget therefore mr speaker we have to look at the elimination of gender-based violence you must not dislike somebody because the person is a man or because the person is a woman you must not beat somebody because the person is a man or because the person is a woman this is not tolerated and that is what we call gender-based violence that some people are are receiving violent acts especially women and girls because they are women and therefore the country has legislation to speak to that mr speaker we have to look at the governance and gender mainstreaming and this government has taken a policy decision that it will mainstream gender in all its programs so when we look at all the projects that we have in the budget mr speaker we have to look in the implementation process to ensure that both men and women are treated equally and that is what we mean by gender mainstreaming in the budget so when the prime minister speaks to construction he speaks to agriculture he speaks to tourism any project that the government implements we have to check to see whether men and women are treated equally and fairly mr speaker women are playing a very important role in economic development in the country and we speak to women's economic empowerment and environmental sustainability recognizing the contributions of women especially women in rural settings for food security and environmental sustainability the government of st lucia and this budget speaks across the goal is to alleviate poverty which is strategically rooted in skills development including financial literacy and business development and management a lot of women mr speaker were not venturing into business because they have the nurturing personality behavior where they take care of their family and their children and they would not want to venture into business but now the world of work has opened up and women are taking advantage of this opportunity and when we speak to the youth economy we spoke we speak to the micro small and medium businesses we speak to community tourism we speak to agriculture and the seven crop mr speaker the women are coming out they are coming out there to participate in the economic activity of this country and mr speaker with their participation i can assure you prime minister that you are going to see an exponential growth in the economy and in economic activity because women have been left out in the mainstream of the economy and with their presence and the opportunity afforded to them in this budget they are going to take advantage of that opportunity to propel economic growth and development in this country mr speaker i just want to alert you that the government has taken up a decision to establish gender focal points in every ministry and that focal point involves financial analysts planners and heads of department who will be busy in ensuring that the government programs are gender sensitive mr speaker we have
of the issue of gender-based violence. And we need to stop it. We have done training. We are involving the Ministry of Health. We are involving the Department of Justice and Policing and Social Workers in the public sector and civil society to ensure a minimum standard of service for gender-based violence. Last year, Mr. Speaker, the Gender Affairs Department trained 50 police officers in how to handle cases of domestic violence. A booklet was developed for the use by the police and other agencies on domestic violence. And that is where we begin to tap and fight and stem the issue of crime and violence in the country. It must start in the home. It must start in the family. It must go into the schools and all the other social partners. The Prime Minister has made a commitment to support all programs and to promote gender equality in the society. Hence, he has demonstrated that by his actions. One, the appointment of a commissioner of police who is a woman. The president of the Senate who is a woman, and I see her present in this group, so the eyes have it. <laughs> the appointment of four women senators and many women on boards and commission. And I'm, I'm saying that um, St. Lucia is becoming the envy of the region because the, st the statistics are changing. And they have done an analysis and they have seen that St. Lucia has done very well during the last year when it comes to gender issues in its programs and projects. We may not be paying attention to it, but the, the regional and international communities are paying very close attention to that. And Prime Minister, I'm telling you, you are doing very well in that direction. Don't let the people tell you other things. <laughs> Don't be distracted, you are on track. Mr. Speaker, we are going to establish the one-stop center, and that's for survivors of gender-based violence. They need a place, they need counseling, they need shelter. And therefore, we have identified a location which will cater. We are getting the funding. All they needed was the, the physical space. And the Department of Gender Affairs, in collaboration with the social health, police, and justice sector, we are working to put that in place. The department is supported by the Caribbean Development Bank and the United Nations Women in this initiative. So that is where the funding is coming from for this program. Mr. Speaker, as we speak to this budget, I'm just adding the other component where just this week, I addressed about 20 women who participated in a training for business women in a Build Back Equal project. That is because of COVID, a lot of women had lost their jobs and the economic situation had gotten worse. And therefore, the project is called Build Back Equal. That means while we're building back, we must ensure there is equality. And this is financed by UN Women and the Canadian government. It's a two million US dollar project and the Prime Minister was present at the launching of this project in St. Lucia. He attended and he addressed the gathering about almost a year ago. And I told them they were taking too long to start the implementation, so it's just that rolling now. So sometimes we talk about certain things and it takes almost another year or two years before it starts. However, I was pleased to address the participants um, on, on Wednesday this week, and they were on fire. They were very excited, and they have positioned themselves to benefit from the grant, from the micro, small, and medium-sized business. So, Minister for Sufre, um, um, Parliamentary Rep for Sufre and Minister for Commerce, you will see more applications coming in. Some might be going after the youth economy. 
and some might go after agriculture or tourism, community tourism. The participants were fortunate to have an excellent presenter from Nigeria to facilitate the session. The training focused on leadership capabilities, decision making, conflict resolution, emotional intelligence, team leadership, and consensus building. Mr. Speaker, there are a number of policy changes we need to explore to improve efficiency. And that would in, include gender, in the gender relations unit, a gender policy and mainstreaming unit. So we are trying to improve the structure within the gender department. So one section will address gender relations and the other section will look at the policy and, policy and gender mainstreaming. And there we will have a director so it's just a reconfiguration of the department to address that. We need a legal officer and we need a data analyst. Mr. Speaker, I move quickly to the Department of Labor. Mr. Speaker, to reduce crime and violence and improve health care, it is important to note on page 7 of the budget, the Prime Minister stated that the Labor Party came from the bosom of the labor movement and therefore we have to remain true to the cause of workers and protect and defend them especially the vulnerable ones and he called for the protection to ensure that they receive a fair day's wage for a fair day's work that's in the the budget mr speaker and therefore mr speaker the budget speaks to the Minimum and Equity Wage Commission. This commission started work in earnest and have since given a preliminary report to me as Minister of Labor to obtain feedback before the final document is prepared for presentation to the Prime Minister and Cabinet of Ministers. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister speaks to negotiations. And when we look at page 9, you would have noticed that, Mr. Speaker, that the Prime Minister paid $18.3 million back pay to public servants and $4.4 million to Liat and Majestic workers, former employees of these two entities. And the workers of St. Lucia have applauded the Prime Minister for honoring the obligation of this government and therefore they hope um, when we you whet their appetite they just look for more but we are hoping that they understand that this is a responsibility that this government had and we have no choice but to honor that the prime minister has given instruction mr speaker to put the necessary mechanisms in place to commence negotiations with public sector unions. We should commence shortly, and he also would like to end it within the shortest period of time to avoid any accumulation of huge back pay. The Prime Minister is afraid of the back pay. The figures are huge. So we need to negotiate in a timely manner so that we do not build back pay. I have also informed Mr. Speaker, the, the unions, that all collective agreements will be examined to check if there are any unresolved matters which could be dealt with before the start of negotiation. Because many times, Mr. Speaker, the unions negotiate a collective agreement, half of the things are not implemented and they are going into another round. And some of the issues are not very huge matters. They are some that this government might be able to address even before we start the next round of negotiation. Mr. Speaker, I've been dealing with the unions on a regular basis to resolve many burning issues to maintain the industrial peace in the country. They have been keeping my life busy, but the dialogue continues. Mr. Speaker, 
the government is committed to building social dialogue among government, employers, and trade unions. So we can have broader participation with key stakeholders in decision making. And consequently, it will put mechanisms in place to formalize this arrangement by establishing a tripartite committee. That discussion was held with the Trade Union Federation, and they have welcomed the idea. We have discussed it with the Employers um, Federation, and they too welcome the idea that with social dialogue, we can resolve a lot of problems and avoiding conflict. Mr. Speaker, this government established the Labor Tribunal and as we mentioned, the Minimum Wage Commission. The challenge we have, Mr. Speaker, is to obtain the necessary resources to support them to function in a more e effective manner and to have And I have promised to engage them to explore what can be done to improve the operating environment. And Mr. Speaker, I can share with you that when the new Labor Tribunal took over, there were over 57 outstanding cases there. And some workers and employers had almost given up. And when they get calls that their cases will be heard, they, have, they became very excited that we have a labor tribunal that is going to put peace between workers and employers. Mr. Speaker, as we move on, we look forward to all of you at the May Day Rally, which will be held at the Financial Center on Monday. That's why government has the day off. So according to the Prime Minister, don't put any other activity to clash with your May Day celebration. So we want all the workers in St. Lucia to find some time for rest and relaxation. And we want parliament, parliamentarians to find time to rest. The Prime Minister said this is a very stressful job. And that is the day for all workers. Because some people tend to feel that employers are not workers. They are workers. All of us are workers. And the, the, the cabinet of ministers and parliamentarians have asked that we form our union. <laughs> we'll have to form our union so that we get proper representation when citizens and constituents take advantage of us. We need representation. So we'll form that organization, we'll register it so that we can um, express our grievances when the employees and some persons put us on the streets. What do you say? Um, Mr. Speaker, you would want some union representation too? Mr. Speaker, I move quickly to the Department of Home Affairs. And my colleague, um, my colleague Minister, Parliamentary Rep for Library, is not here today because he would have liked me to share that with him. And we shared a joke, and I told him he's Minister of External Affairs, and I'm Minister of Home Affairs. So when the Prime Minister sees him in Cabinet, he will ask him, what are you doing here? You are supposed to be external. <laughs> So he likes that joke. And if I told the Prime Minister, then I have to travel to go whatever meeting, he tell me, no, you cannot go because you are Minister of Home Affairs. You have to stay home and take care of affairs. <laughs> so Mr. Speaker, the Department of Home Affairs, as stated in the budget by the Prime Minister, speaks to security as a priority for this financial year. I am pleased on the approach the Prime Minister has taken in combating the upsurge in criminal activities in St. Lucia. 
Mr. Speaker, he is recommending a holistic approach and that it is not left to the police and government, meaning politicians. Although some politicians on the other side, they feel they are not in it. And I have said, Mr. Speaker, that the problems that we have in criminal activities, no matter where in the island, usually it's a bad seed that was sown and we are harvesting the bad fruits now. And therefore, this government cannot just take blame for what is happening. We have to check what happened before. Did we ensure that there was law and order? Did we ensure that we planted good seeds so that today we can harvest good fruits? Mr. Speaker, I've always felt that we cannot just blame the government and the police for an escalation in criminal activity. It is not just about the police. Since I last reported to this house, Mr. Speaker, I have engaged the representatives of the Borderland Welfare Association. I have visited the SSU to check the conditions under which they work. And Mr. Speaker, I can tell you since my visit, there has been a great improvement because I don't want to tell you what I saw, but they sent me the photos and the Prime Minister put the resources so that our law enforcement officers have a decent environment to work. Mr. Speaker, the Royal St. Lucia Police Force and the Police Welfare Association, the Probation and Parole Unit, the Fire Service Officers, the Trade Union Federation, the National Workers Union, all the public sector and non-public sector unions have been engaging me on a number of issues, those relating to the collective agreements that are not resolved, and we are getting our permanent secretaries from the various ministries to address these issues. I have been making the effort to engage them and to maintain a line of communication among all the unions. That is important, Mr. Speaker. The police will seek to improve public perception through community involvement in crime fighting, thereby enhancing citizen security and safety. Adoption of technological improvement in intelligence gathering, improvement in police radar equipment, and in police outreach and public relations program. That is coming in this budget as presented by the Honorable Prime Minister. They want to adopt a proactive approach to crime prevention and problem solving to improve citizen security. They are receiving an additional 15 police officers for the establishment of a major crime unit and increased patrols. The procurement of equipment for major crimes unit and to pay license of special police equipment. For example, Mr. Speaker, I have made a call here, and I will say it again, that in the Department of Education, we need to increase school attendant officers. COVID-19 did not do justice to our youth. They were left idled. They didn't have anything to do, and therefore, some criminal elements have preyed on these children. And Mr. Speaker, I continue to say that when we see the persons who are involved in some of the heinous criminal activities, they are very young persons. And therefore, we have to prevent and not cure. Mr. Speaker, to create a safe for road traffic environment through public sensitization, enforcement of traffic laws, and stakeholder collaboration. To purchase additional police vehicles, implement traffic management project, procurement of equipment for police visibility project. All these are enshrined in this budget to improve security in this country. 
Mr. Speaker, the government is also embarking on a vexing issue among the protective services. And the Prime Minister has committed that we will address the matter. And right now, as we speak, Mr. S Speaker, we have some experts on the ground that are involved in revisiting the benchmark qualification for the protective services. And they should give a report very soon. That will address a lot of the teething problems we have with the way protective officers are promoted. And it was one where the promotions were aligned to certification. And we have discovered that when we look at what happens in other countries, that the protective services require very, very good skills, abilities, and experience for them to perform well. Not how many degrees you have, it's how well you are on the ground. <laughs> to deliver a professional police service through capacity building, training, and human resource management, the Prime Minister has quadruple, triple, double, exponentially increased the budget for training of the protective services. Mr. Speaker, you would have heard the story that when we came in, the last government did not see the need to give our officers the skills and the knowledge that they need for them to do their work. And this Prime Minister has increased that. In fact, this year he increased it by another $300,000. Mr. Speaker, we have to look at regularization of salaries for special constables. Training, which represents an increase in, police, in the police training vault. Repairs to police facilities, drug squad building. Rental of new premises for immigration units and other police facilities. To create border management in collaboration with other law enforcement agencies and stakeholders. The commencement of a witness protection program. This government is investing heavily in national security, security and safety of our people, and we want our St. Lucians to play their part work with the law enforcement officers because when you protect your neighbor you are also protecting yourself it's not about them it is about us mr speaker in immigration we have to deal with the issue of immigration and passports which has caused much distress to the general public government has identified a new location for the department to operate in the near future. We are just awaiting some of the retrofitting work to be completed before they can move to that new location. Government has paid for 175,000 passports. So there will not be a shortage of passports. So those persons whose passports are not due for renewal, there is no need to rush because there will be passports. And the border management system, which gives us Yes, they can use their own until it expires. The border management system is now in operation. So there is that single window where you can see all persons who enter and exit this country through legal means. So we have, uh, we have the ED online forms for persons traveling in and out of the country. Um, you don't have to go and fill in this form. You can do it online to save time. So we have made some significant progress in this direction. The Marine Unit has received some attention, especially in the area of training and some equipment to improve on their work. The Fire Service has requested a new Fire Service Headquarters. And therefore, the Prime Minister has put in some allocation to start the process. So the feasibility work is starting. They are due to get four new fire vehicles for the stations in Brosile and George F.L. Charles. And the big story, Mr. Speaker, Borderly Correctional Facility. 
Bordele will be receiving the best allocation in 20 years, as stated by a high-ranking officer of the Bordele Correctional Facility. This is the this is the first time they have seen such a heavy investment in this facility. I have visited Bordele Correctional Facility four times since I became Minister for Home Affairs. I have done a tour of the facility twice and I have held meeting with management three times. My most recent visit was last week where we conducted an assessment of the level of progress made since the introduction of the review report and the appointment of a new director. The outcome of the exercise, Mr. Speaker, revealed that the facility has been making great strides. Most of the short-term recommendations have been achieved. There is almost a complete turnaround in the institution. The facility is rapidly developing into a rehabilitation center. The inmates have planted 3,000 plantain and banana plants. 2,000 dashing plants. They have rabbits. They have pigs. And they are to receive 3,500 chickens. Remember, you have 10 minutes left. Hey, I need about 15 minutes. <laughs> Member for January North. Mr. Speaker, I move for the invocation of Standing Order 3210 to allow the Honourable Member for Barbado an additional 15 minutes within which to complete her presentation. Honourable Members, the question is that we invoke Standing Order 3210 to allow the Member for Barbado an additional 15 minutes in which to conclude a presentation. I now put a question. As many as of that opinion say aye. aye. As many as of a country opinion say no. So the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I noticed that Minister of Agriculture is smiling. <laughs> and they tell me to say it in Creole. <laughs> That's right. No way. C'est mon nom qui a la jolie là, il y a planté 3000 plants bananes et pifigues, 2000 plants d'achine, et il y a établi une um, femme poule, quand il y a 3600 gibier dedans là. Il y a un cochon, il y a un lapin, et il y a un peu de si il y a un peu de bœuf. <laughs> they said they need cows. Yes, so anybody who can donate them two cows, that would be very good for them. The Prime Minister has made an allocation to fence the institution to improve security. We'll purchase a vehicle and equipment for officers. They just received 25 new recruits to improve on the number of staff. They have received support from stakeholders to construct a playing field for the inmates. And they have been involved in football competition in the constituency of Honorable Parliamentary Rep for Denry North. So that is what we talk about, rehabilitation. I visited the sewing unit. They will be involved in repairing our furniture. So, so we are seeing that the inmates are, are treated with some level of dignity. I, I participated in a symposium they had. They had a show. And they are very talented. And therefore, we need to make use of this talent while they are inside there. Right. Mr. Speaker, while we speak on security, the Department of Home Affairs is getting ready to launch the Youth at Risk Unit. The preliminary work has been completed and it is a unit that will help in the coordination of all agencies on activities involving vulnerable youth. All the necessary groundwork has been established and we should launch the unit soon. Mr. Speaker, when I examined the budget, I noticed that St. Lucia's record 
St. Lucia records economic growth of 18.1% as it is the largest in economy in the OECS. This is good news, Mr. Speaker. This is an indication of good leadership, good financial management. And I kept telling you the Prime Minister has a calculator, but I'll not tell you what keys that are on them. That calculator gets it right. Mr. Speaker, there is one fundamental principle I learned in leading any organization, and that is a good leader takes only two years to turn an organization around. And the Prime Minister has three more months to go, and he has already turned St. Lucia around. Mr. Speaker, we have a government that is people-centered. That is why the opposition cannot stomach the phrase, putting people first. I have no difficulty with the phrase, Mr. Speaker, because this is what I have been doing all my life. All my life. In the teaching profession and in the trade union movement, and as a community activist, I have always been putting people first. So I'm in the right place at the right time among the right people for the right reason. Mr. Speaker, I listened to my colleagues and I looked at the budget and I'm putting everyone on notice that I am the minister who has very little to give to other ministries. I am waiting for support from all ministers to develop my constituency. So, Minister of Agriculture, I'm awaiting for support for my farmers who have been crying for help with drainage and irrigation. I have prepared, Mr. Minister of Agriculture, I have prepared some gas vouchers to help them in the dry season. 57 farmers will benefit from that. They are crying. They cannot water their plants. So I'm waiting for the rest from you. <laughs> no, we, we'll wait because we are waiting for that to ease up before they, they, they irrigate. Although when too much rain comes, they get flooding. We are starting our kitchen garden competition, Ms. Minister of Agriculture. So we are waiting for the support. When I check on you, the Prime Minister, you tell me check the Prime Minister. <laughs> when I check the Prime Minister, the Prime Minister tell me check you. <laughs> so I want to know who to check. <laughs> so we want to see agriculture moving in the constituency. Minister of Youth and Sports, I need your support. We have started, we have started some work and the playing fields at Babolo are in a total mess. The last government just ignored that. They put stadium, they put thing and the field, the outfield is not good. The players, especially the lager field, nobody goes and play on that field. When you walk on that field, you see the kind of holes. You swear it's smooth when you look at the grass. But when you walk in, Mr. Um, Mr. Speaker, it's a mess. Babona has been, was one time described as the sports capital of St. Lucia. And I will not allow it to slip away. Yes. Yes. Babono, not me that coined it. Find out. Check your history. <laughs> when we had Lavo Spencer in the Olympic, we have um, Albert Reynolds. We have, no, just check the records. Check the records. Not me. Just, right? The sports capital where we had persons in all different walks of sports, not just one person that excelled in one area, you know. And you heard the Minister of Sports spoke earlier. And I will tell you, Mr. Speaker. No, no, no. <laughs> That's when he was in Marshall. I will need support. 
I'm starting the resurfacing of the playing field near the Babolo Secondary School. The students here do not have a playing area, and the principal has been asking. We have mobilized the equipment, it's already there, but because of the rain, we have, and I have spoken to the Minister of Sports, Youth and Sports, and we should get some support there so that we can create that space for the children to release their energy. The equipment, as I said, is there and we should start soon. Mr. Speaker, my interest in sports is there. And I noticed the condition of the washroom at the Foasa playing field, the home ground of football in Babolo. And when you have new generation football team, that's their home ground. And therefore, I had to go ahead and repair that toilet for them to use it. I also started the rehabilitation of the Lager toilet facility, which was vandalized during the time of the last administration. It requires major works, but what we have done, we have sealed it so people do not continue to vandalize it. We put doors and metal doors to secure, and we await um, support from the Ministry of Youth and Sports to do that. The Minister of Local Government and Housing, we have been doing renovations on four community centers, Mr. Speaker. The Lage Community Center, the Bogis Community Center, the Debara Community Center, and the Foasa Community Center and major improvements around the Babono multipurpose center. Mr. Speaker, we could not wait. We just had to move because these facilities were abandoned during the last five years, and therefore we had to make, it, make them habitable. Minister of Infrastructure, I'm constructing six bus shelters and a bridge in Timon, we have spoken about that. So we'll see how we're getting help. <clears throat> and we have spoken about the Babono Grosile Link Road. That one, Minister or Parliamentary Rep for Grosile and Babono will not rest on that one. It is one for major economic activity for St. Lucia. It's going to reduce on the traffic on the highway. There are, there are a, lot, a lot of benefits from it. And I, I, I recall my husband said from the time he was cabinet secretary many decades ago, that was drawn to the attention of the government. So I think he will feel very pleased if he see finally government will address that. So it's not a, an issue that just came out. It has been there for many decades. I need help. I have erected many road signs, Mr. Speaker, and directions so you can move around Babono with greater ease so that you don't feel lost. The constituents are anxiously awaiting the street lights for their own safety. And we have agreed, Minister of Infrastructure, Parliamentary Rep for Castries North that when we complete the potholing and repair of the existing roads, we will declare Babono to be a whole less or no whole road community. Because we are going to take on the responsibility to continue to maintain that road and make it motorable for all motorists. Mr. Speaker, I just want to remind the Minister of Infrastructure that there is a link road between Gara and Bogis which was started by the last parliamentary rep. And the people are clamoring, they want to see that road completed. So I look forward to seeing it back on the agenda for completion. Minister of Tourism and Creative Industries, I just want to remind you that Babono is known for culture and agriculture. Thanks for giving us a small window for us to showcase jazz and carnival in our community. 
We are bringing life back to Babono because Babono had been sleeping and snoring for the last five years. Under Ezekiel. Under Ezekiel. <laughs> <laughs> so we want our fair share of celebration. <laughs> Babono had a very rich cultural background, all that is disappearing. Kele, all the drumming, the history is there, but we are losing it. Okay? So with your support, we are going to bring that back. Um, we also want our share of our community tourism. That is important. Minister of Commerce, we want to establish our cooperative. Long, long time ago, Babano used to have a cooperative. That disappeared decades. We want to set up our community foundation for Babano. Minister of Equity, so far so good. But I have three small communities I'm getting ready <laughs> to transform. And all the areas will be supported. There are sometimes we try to talk about poverty and improving the quality of life. But Mr. Speaker, what we have to do, we have to transform the community, not just giving little handout. So we are starting with one, a major cleanup. Two, housing will come in with housing repair. Then we have the bundle from Flo where they have internet. We'll get the devices for the children. We create employment for the people there. And they will transform that area. There are three communities in Babono. We really need to do that transformation. Mr. Speaker, the budget that we have in front of us, I describe it as a budget which is pregnant. It has just gone into labor, and it will soon deliver what the St. Lucian people have been waiting for. The social support is necessary in all aspects of national development. This budget is a comprehensive budget. It touches on the fabrics of society. It caters for all persons in the society. All we have to do is to implement in a timely manner so that we can bring services to our people. Mr. Speaker, I give 100 plus support to this budget as presented by the Honorable Prime Minister and Minister of Finance and Parliamentary Rep for Castries East. Let me take this opportunity, Mr. Speaker, to thank the Almighty God for the strength and health to serve the people of St. Lucia. In a capacity as parliamentary representative for Babono, and let me thank the Prime Minister for his trust and confidence in me to hold the fort in the public service, home affairs, labor, and gender affairs. And thank the supporters from my constituency for their confidence in me. I want to thank my cabinet colleagues for their support and cooperation and camaraderie. Let me thank my husband, Mr. Victor Poyot, who has accused me of neglecting him when I put the people first. <laughs> Order. Order. And my brothers and nieces and nephews, especially my niece, Mr. Speaker, who played the role of Prime Minister when his preschool visited the Prime Minister. She's an admirer of the Prime Minister. My secretary at the constituency office, Calda Sebastian, my personal assistant, Marilyn, Dr. Tekla Fis Lewis, for her support in coordinating events in Babono, Mr. Linus Justin, project supervisor, and many, many others. Mr. Speaker, I thank them for the support. I thank them for the encouragement. Let me thank my staff in the public service, home affairs, labor, and gender affairs. My permanent secretary in the Department of Public Service, Ms. Janet Bernard, and Deputy Permanent Secretary, Mrs. Sheila Imbat. Permanent Secretary in the Department of Home Affairs, 
Dr. Elizabeth Bailey and her deputy, Mr. Ricky Quinlan, and all the other heads of departments in the ministry. A special word of appreciation to Ambassador of the Republic of China, Taiwan, His Excellency Peter Chen, and Ambassador of Venezuela. They have been very supportive of the people of Babono. Mr. Speaker, I thank you for your attention as I close by giving my unconditional support to the appropriation bill for 2023-2024 as, as, as presented by the Honorable Parliamentary Representative for Castries East and the Prime Minister of St. Lucia. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.